Alrighty guys, so how's it going today? So I'm just doing this little video to show kind of what I've what I've done for a CB setup in my house. Um, nothing super special. It's just you know I kind of need to be able to talk to family members if I happen to be out in the field or something. So and I didn't want to want to spend a whole whack of money um, just to uh, you know talk to family members or whatever. So, basically, this is this is the uh, base station uh, CB setup. I don't know if you guys can see this okay or not, but uh, it probably helps having the light on, but I have it on right now. I don't know if it makes a difference without it. Let's find out. Oh, yeah, definitely. It helps. So, this radio right here that I have here is a Cobra 29 LX CB radio. It's more of the, uh, well, more of the higher end kind of radios. There's more expensive ones out there, but this is basically about as, is about as good as you're going to get. Now, you can save money and get a cheaper radio if you want, um, because it's really not about the CB radio. It's more about the what kind of an antenna you have. So, yeah, this is just this is just a Cobra Twenty Nine LX. Um, like I said, we'll go over the radio a little bit. There's there's quite a bit to this radio. Um, you can see what all the you know this is for your your noise here, your uh, calibration, and what is that other one? SWR reading, which this one I don't use. Because I have a another one hooked up to it. That's got to get disconnected at some point. If you can see it down there on the bottom of your screen. That's my SWR meter. That's going to get disconnected at some point. Because right now I'm still trying out different antennas. But as of right now it should be... Uh, SWR readings went up a little bit. But I, I think it's always going to change with the weather anyway. Um... Here, you got two knobs on this guy right here. This little one is your volume. The other one is your squelch. You see that there. That's your squelch. You got your dynamite here, which I just said about halfway. This is your channel selector and your menu selector. Here is your RF gain. This is what you want to kind of use when you're kind of more when you're trying to pick up weaker signals um, it does help and then you have uh, Delta tune which I got that set about halfway ish the other one if you can see it okay I can't uh, I moved you guys this will help a little bit over here you got another dual room or two re two controls I believe the inner one, yeah, the inner one is your talk back, which I have turned off because I don't, I don't need talk back. And then the outer, the outer one is your, your calibration knob, so you can calibrate your antenna to your radio. But that, I've, I've tried using this, you know, but when you, it seems like when you try to tune your radio itself, it changes that meter down there, so... They say to use the the separate meters. They don't recommend to use the ones that are built into your radio. So I don't bother. You got your dim and escape button. Uh, channel 9 and 19 instant buttons. You got scan. You can see it scans. And then... It, right now it's scanning all through all 40 channels. If you hit it again, it'll scan the channels that you can select in the menu. See, it says little. It says menu down here. Well, I got channel 4 and channel 19 marked. 
because channel 4 is my channel, which is, you know, our channel, and then channel 19 is obviously our, the trucker channels, well, we get truckers to town, and sometimes you gotta kind of have to yell at them a little bit, because they do stupid things, and you need to remind them of that, because here in town, we do have rules for truckers, so, but we're not going to get into that, and then you can stop it, you can change your channel with the this menu button. Then you have CB weather and PA button. Right now we're in CB mode. We can go over, we can go over to the weather. Falls. You can hear that weather. <clears throat> so, and you can see that it you can see that it says weather up here. Um. Since I have a different antenna put up now, I can actually pick up. Uh, let's actually see here. Well, channel one kind of comes in, but it went out right now because of the weather. Channel two comes in. Three's out. Four comes in because that's Canadian. Five. A little bit of six. Seven for sure. I usually just listen to channel seven a little bit. And then you got PA. Uh, PA is if you have an external, um, like, not a, well, I don't know, if, a speaker. That's useful, especially if you have this in a vehicle or something and, you know, and maybe someone's doing something stupid and you want to yell at them, but you don't want to, you know, blow your voice out. You can switch over to PA and then you'd put the speaker on the outside of your car or under the hood or something and then you could talk that way. Um, and then you can go back to just your basic radio. So you got plenty of things there to do. Uh, what else do you got? And the select button, you got set clock, which I already set mine. Alarm clock, which it's a alarm clock. You know, it'll wake you up at a certain time. Set countdown, that's what truckers would use when they're on the road. Ketones. The ketone is that beeping that you hear when you select things. That beeping you're hearing. You can set the weather alerts, weather scan, and the weather auto scan. That's all on. And then display color. If you press it, it'll say set color. You can change it. That's an amber, which is really dim. Even when you got the dim off, there's a dim over here too, but that's still pretty dim which is good if you want to say power because my power went down a little bit so you got red which is neat a little bit too bright though for me green and blue I find that blue and green are the easiest ones to see if you wanted to read this and this amber is okay but it's a little bit too dim for my liking so I just try to stick with blue or green um, plus blue and green are just a little bit easier on the camera um, well, this is easy on the camera, too. Red's a little bit walky for it. And then you can just press it again. You can set the brightness. You know, but you can also do that here, too, with the uh, dim button. So, uh, what else we got? We got setting. Here we got contrast. What that does... If you can you can notice it now. Notice how the texts are kind of disappearing. You're getting more of just of these lines. See, that's maxed out. It looks worse on the camera than it actually does in person, but... It's... I get rid of most of that. If you go too much, then it starts to dim. So I try to go right about... Here, somewhere. Just so you kind of get the most brightness out of your screen. Radio check. That's you can check the the functions of your radio, and that's just what I've been trying to tell some of my subscribers. They don't understand that this radio does have a self checking tool built into it. So I'm gonna grab the mic. And well, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change channels because I don't want I don't want to bother truckers. So even though I don't think they would hear me anyway, I don't want to mess up their channel so go to radio check it says one two three one two three so number one is 
battery voltage, which I'm not using a battery. I have a uh, power adapter, and it says that it passes. And then it says to check the PT, to check the power output. And you see that it does fail there for a split second, but I think it's always going to do that anyway. It's just that kind. Of, it's just that kind of a radio. Oh yeah, and then it says to check the antenna. Well, the antenna passes, and so did my other antenna that I had on there. All my channel, the, the antennas that I've had, I actually before this antenna that I have now, I had a 102 inch whip put on top of the house because I liked the whips and I thought it would work, but I wasn't getting the range that I wanted. I wasn't even getting to the next street over, which is maybe 500,000 feet, maybe not even that. I couldn't even get to that, so it wasn't doing me any good. Now I'm getting to the farm yard. Well, I need to get further than the farm yard, but um, it's doing better. You can see that, you know, it's radio check, radio check. And it doesn't interfere with my keyboard on my computer, so it's the mic. So keep the mic away from your keyboards. If you plan on mounting it next to your computer, um, keep it away from the keyboard. In other words, you should be fine. And actually, my monitors are right over here as well. That's my monitor. So the monitor is not going to really interfere with it too much. Not like the, maybe the keyboard or the, or the tower would do. So I think that was all that there was for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then you got settings, which I don't know what the software thing does. And then you can you can go back to default settings, which means if you mess up on your settings and you don't know how to correct it, you can just go here and go back to default. And it'll reset all your settings. So I'm gonna hit escape. So I don't I don't want to change my settings because I like them the way they are. Um. You can see it says CB, and this is the, the frequency that it's on. Well, we're on channel 10, so that would be 27.075. Time is 10.55 a.m. You can disable that or enable it. I have it enabled, you know, because even though I don't need it, because i got tons of clocks around me already, but I like the look. It's got the weather band thing down here, the little thing. That means that I have the weather turned on on this radio. So, meaning... If a alert goes out and it's in my county or in, you know whatever county you should have this program for, you'll get a notification. I do have a weather radio, a uh, NOAA weather radio, by my TV, and that's hooked up to another antenna, and that goes way out. So that that one's perfect. You can see that it's got the RX, and then if you talk, it says TX, and then it shows your your level of whatever you know whatever you're saying so there's not a whole heck of a lot to the radio but it is this is the bigger radio they have another one like this it's a Cobra 25 it's a compact version of this I think it still comes with all the same features it's just more compact but it's more money too I don't it's like 10 or 15 bucks more than this this was like 100 120 they wanted like I think like 100 30, 140, something like that. It depends on where you buy them. You can get them probably cheaper on eBay. You can get some used ones too. I got new because I didn't want to deal with a used one. So, um, but um, like I said, the antenna that I had on here before was a 102 inch whip mounted on a three foot tripod. I had it all grounded and everything. It just wasn't performing to what I needed it to do like I've seen some YouTube videos on it and they said there's no reason why it shouldn't work and like I said I've seen other, other people do it I couldn't get it to work so I said to hell with it I went and got a Workman B100 antenna it's a little I think it's like a three foot 39 inch um, it is a base station antenna everyone was telling me to get a base station antenna because you'd, you'd have better luck with that um, which is what I did. It's improved a little bit, but it's I can I can receive you know things quite a ways. Um, there is a truck stop about a mile from here, and I did pick up some chatter today even, and I picked up some I don't know a couple days ago. I made a video on that as well. Um, 
I lost them no halfway because I think they were moving, so they were getting out of my range. So no matter what kind of antenna you have, you're always going to get, you're going to be able to receive okay. You're just not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to be able to send your signals out, you know, or your, if you're talking, you're not going to be able to go that far out. But since I put the uh, B100 up, it's improved quite a bit, but it's not, I needed to go at least a mile or a mile and a half, maybe two miles at the, at the most. I'm not getting that. So, basically meaning I'm going to have to get a, I'm going to have to put my antenna higher up. So I, but I'm not going to do that until spring because it's getting too cold now in the winter times here. So, and I won't be using this radio for personal use, you know, because I'm not going to be, you know, leaving the house for many hours. So, Basically, this is just going to be used now for, for the wintertime, and it's going to be used for the weather and for truckers if they should happen to come in, which they probably won't get any chatter. But if they're out of range, you need to turn your squelch down until you start receiving, and then just crank this up um, to when, you know, you got to kind of like do all this stuff, you know, to kind of... If you can dial it in just right, you can actually pick up um, one good trucker. Now, there's always truckers talking to another trucker. That's what was going on that one day, and I was able to receive one of them. So I knew that, like, I was there, I was able to receive him really good. So I knew he was within, he was close enough. So I was able to understand what he was saying. But the other guy, he was a little bit more staticky. So I figured he must have been on the highway heading to wherever from the truck stop. So. But, so yeah, um, and the power adapter, which is down here, I'll see if I can show you guys that, is, uh, if it'll focus, it's a 10 amp, you know, power supply, but you probably, I think you could get away with a 2 amp if you really wanted to, you probably don't need to get overkill. I got this one basically because, um, you guys are really crooked here for some reason now. What's up with that? I basically got that one because it was, um, well, because someone told me that I needed a bigger power supply, which I don't think I did. I think the 2 amp one that I had was plenty for it. But I figured I'd give him a shot because, you know, the guy that I was talking to, he does know his CB shit, that's for sure. Because he's even got ham radios and he's got, like, you know, probably like 30 years of, of experience. So, I went and upgraded the power supply. I guess he told me to. And this radio only pulls out about an amp and a half. And then the, the power wire, which you can see right here, right here, that's the power cord. It's got a two amp fuse on there, so meaning if you're pulling over two amps, you're gonna be, you're gonna blow out that fuse, and you just have to replace it. So, but I got I, I'm keeping this power supply because it's got the digital gauges in it, you know, whatever to tell you your amps and your voltage. So that's why I'm keeping it because I like that. At least I can keep an eye on what my radio is doing at all times. Um. So. Yeah, and then it's just got the, uh, the Cobra uh, mic that comes with it. You can upgrade them as well. I believe it's a 4-pin. So, uh, which works. I mean, if, if you don't like, you know, some people say they upgrade them because they can help make the radio perform better. Or they, or they, it makes them sound better. Um... If you want to do that, you can do it. I mean, if you got the money to do it and you don't like these styles, knock yourself out. But I'm keeping it because it works for me. And it works. It's There's nothing wrong with it. It's brand new. It's right. Out of, I mean, I've had it up for a couple of months now, but it's, you know, it works. So I'm not going to complain about it. And this is where it's hung up. Um, you know, right there. I don't know if you can see that too well, but that's, you know, I got the little... The hanger 
I was going to put it on the side of the radio, so it would be down here. But then, as you can see, then I'd have cord everywhere. So, yeah, so I didn't want, you know, tons of cordage freaking hanging everywhere. So, I just mounted it up there. It kind of gets rid of it a little bit. And, uh, it's just... Ah, it's just a little bit more convenient for me. But you can do it however you want to do it. I mean, it's really up to you guys. Um, but some say that you can get away with a regular mobile antenna. I think you can. You would. You have to definitely know what the hell you're doing. And I'm not a newbie at radios, like CB radios. I do know a few things about them. But to get a basic, to get a you know, a mobile antenna to work on your house, that's where your brain really has to think, and my brain barely thinks as it is, and so, I, uh, I decided to upgrade to a, to a base station antenna, and everyone's telling me to get an Amtron 99, because they would outperform everything else, well, they're a lot of money, they're a hundred bucks, and I paid like 35 for this antenna. And well, the antenna that I have now, I had to put it on a smaller piece of pipe. So the pipes, that pipe's like a four foot section. So it's up there a little bit more, you know. I thought I could mount it just to the tripod itself, but the tripod pipe was too thick. So I had to get a smaller, smaller pipe. So, and get some, I found some muffler clamps at the farm and I just mounted them up with that and stuff. So. But I went to the hardware yesterday and actually got some real clamps. So, because I also picked up a six foot piece of three quarter or whatever threaded rod. It's threaded rod, but you, you don't need threaded rod. You could get away with this, you know, if you could find a pipe. It would work just as good. Because I want to get the antenna higher up. But I might get another section yet too and make it even higher. So, it'll be about 18 feet when I'm done. So, if this antenna doesn't perform after doing all those kind of modifications, then it may may have to come down to getting an Antron 99 and trying to reinforce it so it doesn't snap under high winds because we do get some nasty winds up here in the north and especially with winter time and shit you know you just really can't be worrying about an antenna and you can't be buying antennas all the time because they're not cheap hundred dollars is 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 a lot for an antenna but the guy that there's another guy on YouTube that owns the same antenna as what I have, and he said that his goes out about 15 miles, and he's got his on a 20 foot tower. So, and mine's on top of the roof. I'm not saying that my antenna is already 20 feet off the ground, but it's pretty. It's got to be decently close, but it's still not performing to my standards it's doing better but it's not to my standards i need to go at least a mile mile and a half two miles max you know i don't need to go any further than that because i'm not i i didn't do this cb setup to talk to truckers from a long distance it's mostly so if i'm out in the field and family member needs to get a hold of me like even i guess if mother needs me or something you know um, she can just hop on the radio and be like, hey, I need you here. Something happened or whatever, you know, or someone's looking for you, whatever. Um, now you guys are going to say, well, what's wrong with cell phones? Okay, cell phones work. But where I live, there's a lot of dead zones. Now, I've gotten an upgraded phone now. Um, I got a Samsung Galaxy, whatever the hell it is. It's, it's, a, it's the newest ones you can get, I think, and... It's doing better than what my iPhone did. That's for sure. My my iPhone had a lot of dead spots when I went out in the fields, but this phone has done better. But when I go to the farmyard, it's like it's just a complete dead zone. There's nothing there. I don't know why there's a dead zone there, but there is. So cell phones don't work. And if they do, it takes a long time to send out a text or to receive one, so I need another way of someone getting a hold of me. So I installed this CB radio here in the house. And then I got one on Big Red, which is my 2010 Player Sportsman 850 XP. It is a four-wheeler. Um, I got a Cobra 19 
on that on the four wheeler. It's like an RV style radio. I got that radio because the speaker was was in the front. Compared to this radio, it's underneath. It's underneath here. So that's why I got that radio. And then I got a four foot or no, yeah, four foot Procom antenna. It's a whip antenna for the four wheeler. So and that's all grounded and stuff too. So it works. The four wheeler, the CB on the four wheeler outperforms this radio right now. Um, I can actually pick up truckers from quite a distance, which is surprising. Um, but the house radio, it, it seems to. Now it's been cloudy out too, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But I always find out that on the bigger on big red, the CB worked better on a clear day than it did on a cloudy day. Everyone always says that it works better on a cloudy day. I think that's kind of, in a way it's BS in a way, but it, maybe it's true too, because I've never experienced it working better on a cloudy day. It's always worked better on a clear day. So, it works on a cloudy day too, but it's just that the range kind of, to me it seems like it drops. So, I don't know what's up with that, but it works. It's doing the job of what I wanted to do, so I'm not going to complain about it. People were saying that you're going to fry your radio, like the one here on the house. I get nasty comments all the time. Like, well, you're going to blow up your radio. You cannot blow up your radio if your SWR readings are low. The safe zone for me is under a 1.5. And I'm... Apparently, I was under that. What am I at? Right now, it's about a 1.4, 1.3. But that's because I'm on trial 19. So, And plus, it's cloudy. It varies. It. I think your SWR readings are always going to change. Even on my four wheeler, they're probably different now. I haven't had the SWR meter hooked up to onto that for about a year now, so um, you know I don't. I mean, they're probably going to change. You're, you're, as long as you can get it set, you should be good. I mean, they're going to change, but what are you going to do? You can't sit there and keep freaking dialing them in all the time, you know. Which I mean, if you had a meter hooked up to it all the time. You could. I mean, like right now I do, and so I mean I could I could play with it all the time if I wanted to, but I honestly don't care. I think as long as as long as it stays under 1.5, I'm good about it. I'm okay with it. Um, if it gets into a 2.0, you may want to start checking things because then you're definitely going over your 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 safety limit. Some say you can get away with a 2.0. I wouldn't want to risk it. I would stay under a 1.5. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard about. Others say, "Oh, you can get away with a 2.0," and I ain't. I'm not going to find out. I'm not going to try it. I'm staying under 1.5. If I can't get it under 1.5, then I got to change something. So, uh, when I had the steel whip antenna on top of the house, my SWR readings were down a little bit. They were they were they were under a 1.5. So, of course, with the weather, it. it it changed as well so but it works I get truckers you're probably not gonna hear nothing now because I don't know there's probably just, there's just no one talking mm -hmm. I think when truckers are at a truck stop they're gonna want to eat more than talk so you know they're not gonna chatter on the radios all day so but yeah that's my my base station set up um, for the house. Like I said, I got one on the four wheeler, and I'm also going to be putting I'm putting another radio. Up. I'm either I may get another Cobra 29, or I may even get a Cobra 25 um, for the 1586, the big tractor that I have now at the farm. That's going to need a radio as well put in it. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive because the the 25s are a little bit more money. Because they're, they're the compact version of that, so there's a little bit more money cost in there. And I already kind of know what kind of antenna I'm going to get, so and it's just once you put you gotta put it all together and tune it, make sure it's got the proper power, and drive on with it. So, so if anyone's looking for <clears throat> a good, you know, I mean, if you want a good high quality radio, which isn't going to make a difference anyway, um, you can get yourself a Cobra 29 or. or 
If you don't like Cobra, um, there's other brands. There's Midland or Midland, whatever the hell they're called. They don't have the most expensive radios. I Their radios are fairly cheap. I've looked at, at some of them, and they're like 30 bucks, 40 bucks for the small, the cheapest one, you know, there. Which is good if you're just, if you're doing a cheap CB setup and you're just using it for, like, let's just say if, if you're going to travel with two vehicles or even three, and you want to be able to contact them without having to text and drive or whatever, have your phone up, because, you know, all that's illegal. You can't be texting and driving, you can't be having the phone up to your, your ear while you're driving. That, that stuff's all fucking illegal, you can't do that. So, but a lot of people do it. And they get into accidents and die from it. So I guess the people, some people just have to learn stuff the hard way, I guess. So if you wanted to do a cheap CB setup in the car, a cheap radio is good. I don't recommend you getting a cheap antenna. There's that there's that old saying, I believe, if you have only a hundred dollars to spare, get a twenty dollar radio and get a $80 antenna. I think if my maybe my math is off on that a little bit, but whatever. I'm not good with math and money. So that's that old saying. They recommend to get a cheap radio, but get a, get a high quality antenna. Um, I think Wilson was an antenna. Yeah, the Wilson. They're a damn good antenna right there. Um, K40, I think that's another good brand. Um, there's many brands out there. I mean, there, there, there's there's endless. Um, but the bottom line is, is get yourself a good antenna. It doesn't matter about the radio. It's all about the antenna. I got the radio because, well, I liked it. And I had the money to spare. So I said, why, why the hell not? And I did it. So, And this one happens to have the weather bands in it. So if you want a radio with the weather bands in it, you got to check. You got to do your homework. The Cobra 19 that I have on Big Red has the weather band in it as well, but the antenna is too short, so it doesn't pick up all the can all the channels. It just picks up Canada, so which is fine, I guess. But whatever. I don't speak Canadian really, so I don't really know what the hell's going on. But so you know, I mean, like I said, if you're doing a, a car pooling or you know a convoy, basically, I could say. Where you got more than two vehicles going on, a cheap radio, a CB radio, may be the way to go. You know they have handheld versions of them too, but they kind of get bad reviews and just save yourself the BS and just get yourself an ordinary radio like what I got here. You know, but a cheaper if you don't need an expensive one, get a cheap one. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you get a good antenna. And they say, well, where to power it? Well, I've always. For Big Red, anyway, I went directly to the battery. I do have to put a filter on it, though, because when the fans kick in on my four-wheeler, I get that screaming effect in my radio, so I need to put a power a power filter on that or whatever, which I'll probably do in spring. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be running the radio in the winter time, so that's just what I'll do. And they they say that you can do it to the like to a fuse panel like hook it to something where it comes on with the key you can do it but i it, it could be a more of a convenient thing because it'll if you can just leave your radio you could leave the radio on like it is right now but when you turn the key off on your on your vehicle your your, your radio will turn off but the power button will still be on that's the only way I can see people, people, you know, why people do it. It's because it's it's a convenient thing. They don't have to turn it on, set it. It's already set, you know. But if you wanted to do it the proper way, I'd say go straight to the battery. That's probably the best thing you can do. Put some terminal rings on it, you know, and there you go. Don't do it like I did, and I just kind of stuck the wires in between other rings that were there, and you know, I mean, it works. That's the way I did it on the four wheeler. It worked, but it wasn't. It's not the proper way of doing it. So I I finally got a terminal ring kit and I put some rings on it and that's more secure now. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna rip the wiring. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I didn't want to get. Now you can buy a base station CB radio, but they're big and they're bulky. But 
with those, I think like the the Galaxy, which actually I can look that up right now for y'all if you wanted me to. Um, I believe that you know it was a Galaxy. Um, oh yeah, and I buy all my CB stuff from RightChannelRadios.com. Um, I don't know how this will turn out, but that's the website. That's where I buy all my radio stuff from. You can buy them. There's another website out there that's called CBWorld.com. You know, help yourself. So they got mobile, handheld, base station. So we'll go to base station, and that's what they have. Okay, you know, at 350 bucks, that's a lot. But it's got your, your frequencies and your channel and your SWR already built into it. Okay. That's your, your base station radio. Maybe that's the, you know, the actual correct way of doing it, but you don't have to do it. Um, I mean, this, I mean, here, see, and, and here they're selling Cobra, Udenin, whatever, however you pronounce that, Midland, Galaxy, and then whatever that other one is, but, um, Here's like this is the handheld version of that, which is garbage. A lot of people, a lot of people seem to like it, but I didn't like it. But here's my radio right here. Just slide you guys over right here, and it's the best-selling radio on their website. Is the Cobra 29 LX, and you got the color display thing too. Well, under that is this radio, the Cobra 25 LX. You see how it's more money? See that? This is 119. This is 129 so there's about a $10 difference. But the thing with this radio, it's more, as you can see, it's a mid-sized radio. It's more, <clears throat> it's more compact, which may be a good thing for a tractor or an RV or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, so, and then, of course, then, yeah, you got for antennas, you got fiberglass, magnetic, center load. Which is like trucker antennas. No ground plane. You got the whips. And then the base station. The first antenna I had was a whip. It was this one right here. A 102 inch whip. Which is their best selling one on their website. Which well, it didn't work for me. But it's it's a good antenna. But it didn't work for me. Um, no ground plane antenna is what you want. Or. Or as another way they would probably say it is a base station antenna. Yeah, that's what you probably want. This is what everyone's telling me to get. The Antron 99. Okay, well, I'm not saying it's junk. I just don't think I see much for strength in it. But, I mean, I guess only time time would tell. Um, for CBers and small businesses that need a CB base camp, you know, and, 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 it, and it's tunable, too, so... Whereas the antenna that I have on my house is not tunable. You just have to tune it, and whatever the readings are, that's it, you know. So, but yeah, and then they got the, um, for the tractor, I'm thinking about getting either the, the Wilson 1000 or the Wilson 5,000, which is just right next to it. So either one of those antennas, they're 62 inch whips, but they're probably, it's got good enough range, I think, for me. Um, <clears throat> and then the antenna that I got on Big Red is this guy right over here. Is this guy. So, there you go. And I got it in the, I got it in the uh, four foot length. So, there you go. But, yeah, so, if you guys wanted to do, if you guys wanted to do a cheap radio setup, I would just say, get a radio, a standard CB radio like this. As you can see how it's hung on the bottom of my computer stand. You know, here's the, this is a cabinet. It's mounted to the bottom of the cabinet. It's wood. Um... It seems to be holding it fine. I don't notice it. Uh, it doesn't look like it's ripping it out. So, I mean, if it does, I'll have to just have to bolt it in place then. But for right now, it seems to be holding it in fine. Um, oh, and then you can see my coax wire right there. That's more of the... I bought that on this website as well. 
Um, I think that that's more the the higher end kind of wire. They recommend this one more over any other ones because there's more, I guess, shielding protection to it. I don't know. It's stronger, I guess, whatever. Um, I got this cable in the 100 foot length. So I have a little bit left to spare. So if I have to put my antenna up higher, at least I'll have the wire to do it. I don't know if I'll be able to go up the full 18 feet, but it should do it, I think. So, um... Yeah, I just say if you're going to do a cheap radio setup, um, just get yourself a, a regular mobile radio like this. Is, you know, this, this is actually a mobile radio. And I just say get the proper antenna, get the proper power for it. You shouldn't have a problem with it. And make sure you tune it. A lot of people don't tune their radios and they say that, that they perform okay. Well... You could damage the radio if you don't tune them. If you just plan on listening, you may not have to tune them. But, see, I'm not just going to listen. I'm going to be, this radio is actually going to be used for what it was meant to. And, you know, that's why I got the, the mic on it, right? And the radio will actually will not work with this off. Somehow this... Because on, on Big Red, it was the same way, too. The radio would not work when if this was unscrewed. Your your mic cord. So, it wouldn't work without it. So, uh, apparently, it needs it. Which, well, it's fine. I guess I need it anyway, but I just figured I'd try it, you know. And, and the radio just... The radio picked up nothing at that point, so... I guess there's something in the radio that it's saying, that, well, we're not going to work unless we don't have the mic hooked up to it, so... But that's fine. I ain't gonna worry about it. It works. So, yeah, just make sure that you power your radios correctly. And if you're gonna do a base station antenna, I would save the the BS and just go straight to a uh, a base station antenna. Um, you also have to think about too how far do you want to go out. If you only want to go out about a mile or two, you could probably get away with a shorty antenna, like what I got. Um. Like, if I wanted to talk to my neighbor, and my neighbor's just right next to me. Um, now, he's not home half the time. He is a, he's actually a, a Canadian person, and he's, I don't know, he hasn't, he hasn't come around this summer. He's actually from Canada, and he owns a little bit of property next to me. Um, well, he could get a radio, and he could get the same antenna as me, and we could literally sit here and chat on the radios. So we don't, we, we wouldn't even have to go next door to each other. I mean, that's just laziness, but, you know. You could do it. And I kind of wish that my grandma would put a radio in her house too. She wouldn't need a Cobra 29. She could get away with, you know, like a Midland or something like that. Something cheap, you know, because she just don't need that. She ain't going to know what all these fancy buttons do anyway. And so, you know, she wouldn't need a high-end radio. But if we wanted to talk, like if she wanted to talk to me, and I'm at home, and I don't hear the phone ring. Well, we, we do have a home phone as well. But it doesn't do you any good when you're out of, out of the house, right? So, she could put a radio in her house, and we could talk. You know, she could say, oh, well, you know, someone's here looking for you. Or, we need your help. Come as soon as you can. You know, she ain't going to care about truckers. She ain't going to care about that. So, she would be staying on Channel 4. Right now, as you see, I'm on channel 19. Well, I'm not talking to anyone. I don't have another radio in another house or anything like that, so I don't need to talk to anyone. Um, so I just listen to truckers. And once in a while, I do I do hear some stuff, and it's static, but you have to try to dial it in and get it right so you can hear it better. But I would, I, I definitely recommend. See, another thing too is that when people work on cell phone towers, um, they go down. And they go down because of even tornadoes or lightning strikes or high wind damage, whatever. They do fail. CB radios don't ever fail. The only way they ever fail is if the antenna breaks. Then you're in trouble. But most times your antennas will survive things. You know, if you're gonna get a get the Antron 99, I would actually recommend putting some anchor cables on that. Go as high as you can. Um. Anchor, you know, put something on it, like a clamp, and then clamp the wires inside of it. And 
run those guide wires to something like the corners of your roof or something or I wouldn't go to a tree because if the tree should fall over then it's going to pull your whole entire antenna kit down so anchor it to your roof uh, you can get anchor bolts at the hardware I actually seen some there there's there some light duty ones and some pretty heavy duty ones so whatever you think you would need I'd say get the heavy duty ones and be done with it so but as long as you don't lose power your radio will work and as long as you don't break the antenna um, you know you're good you know you can chat with friends and family members you know when cell towers are down or phone lines are down you know it's just another way of trying to contact someone if you need to it's another backup source basically so so once I get and when I do get a vehicle um, like either a pickup truck or if I get my sister's old car fixed which didn't happen this year as well either like I wanted to well it's a lot of money to put a new motor in so even another used one but it is on the list to get things to get done well either one of those vehicles is gonna obviously is for sure going to get a CB radio put in and it's going to get the 62 inch whip put on top so or on the trunk at least anyway I don't know if I'll put it on the roof or not but if I guess if I do it'd just be better even better range then but <clears throat> you know it's just it's just another reliable way of getting a hold of someone if you need to it's more reliable than cell towers because towers can break they can fail you know and see, another thing too with, with our cell phones, when we're at home, our cell phones mostly rely on the router box because you can you can program them that way too, and they work. And we also have a cell phone booster in our house, so that helps our phones even more. Well, all those things are powered by your you know your AC house power, so you lose your house power, you're done. I would if if you guys are looking for a power source way um, to run your radios without actually using house power, you could get a solar panel, put it up on the roof, get some car batteries, and charge them and keep them going even when the power cuts off. I would recommend getting a big big battery because you never know how long you're going to be out of power. You know, and make sure you get a good good sized solar panel as well. That might even be the ideal way to go because then you never have to worry about house power. You always got backup radio or backup battery and power. So, but to me, it doesn't really matter so much anyway because if the, if the, if the power goes out on the house, I got big red because that, that's a separate power source there. So, if I need to talk to my grandma, I can just go on big red's radio and it works, you know, if I can't use the one here in the house. So, tons of ways of doing it. Um, I think everyone should do it. Even if you're a girl, old, young, you're a guy, you're young and old, whatever. I don't care who the hell you are. I don't care if you're black or Chinese or whatever. I think you should do it. If you if you can spare the money to do it, fucking do it. It'll save your ass in the long run. So, so yeah, guys, that is my seat, my house CB setup. I know I did a lot of chattering, but it's just a standard Cobra 29 LX. Uh, Workman B100 and base, base antenna. It works. It gets the job done, boys. So, But I'm going to probably get bigger later on or something. I don't know. We'll see. So, yeah. I do apologize for a long video if it is. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can kind of let me know. But if you, if I don't know the answers, I'll point you in the right direction to a guy that does know. He can tell you. So, Alrighty, guys. I'm going to take off. So, I guess have a good day and stuff and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Thank you.